Hello and welcome to this module which will introduce you to one of the key engineering controls. Biological safety cabinets offer a safe working environment in which both the operator as well as the sample are protected from extraneous contamination. This biological safety cabinet must be utilized in accordance with the administrative control or the standard operating procedures stated therein. Every biological safety cabinet must be certified periodically in compliance with your local regulatory authority or your national standards. A biological safety cabinet must be utilized in accordance with the standard operating procedure in order to achieve a safe and conducive working environment. As we proceed in this module, I will introduce you to the standard operating procedures for this particular biological safety cabinet. Please take note that the procedures may vary based on the manufacturer and you will have to develop your own standard operating procedures and validate them prior to commencing operations in biological safety cabinets. In this video, I will be describing to you the layout of the standard biological safety cabinet. This cabinet is designed to protect both the sample as well as the operator from exposure to the biological agent. As you can see, all your equipment within this biological safety cabinet has to be laid out so as to ensure a smooth working environment. These are the pipettes which I will require for dispensing the samples which are located at this end. These are my pipette tips. This is the sample which will be transferred and finally over here I have the waste container. This waste container is specially designed for sharps and other disposable waste. For the purpose of our biological safety cabinet, pipette tips are considered as sharps and are disposed in this container. The container is filled to one fourth of its level with a designated sterilant. In this case, I am using 70% ethanol. When we work, we generally work in a smooth flow. So as you can see, I'm going to select the pipette. Then I install a pipette tip. I set the volume and I'm going to withdraw this sample from this bottle and dispense it in the appropriate slot. This is smooth operation of the entire process. When you complete dispensing the sample, the tips can be disposed in the waste container. There are some tips which one needs to note when working in this biological safety cabinet. This region basically has a downdraft of air which protects me as the operator from this sample as well as protects the sample from any kind of contamination which may be produced in the environment. Which is why we work within this zone. There are some things which you cannot do in a biological safety cabinet. For example, the usage of open flames is not permitted as the flame will generate a convection current which can dis disturb the flow of air in this biological safety cabinet. The second thing which you cannot do is operate centrifuges in this environment as centrifuges 
have their own specific airflow patterns generated by their cooling motors and this can in turn disturb the airflow. These are some of the precautions which you need to take into consideration when working in a biological safety cabinet. Now biological safety cabinets must be decontaminated prior to use using a specified sterilizing agent as well as ultraviolet light and disinfect it post usage by using the same sterilant. With regard to cleanup of this cabinet after use, please ensure that you dispose of this waste bin in a designated area and in accordance with the requisite standard operating procedure when it achieves a level which is two-thirds full. This bin has to be sealed and disposed of according to the standard operating procedure which may involve autoclaving or incineration. These are some of the basic guidelines for utilizing a biological safety cabinet. Please refer to your own specific national and local guidelines when you need to develop your own standard operating procedures for biological safety cabinets. Thank you very much for watching.